You know, I consider myself to be a pretty hip dude, and as a hip dude, I can't help but follow the latest trends. So when I heard about this $100 NES challenge, I threw on my fly windbreaker, strapped on my fanny pack, popped in my Back to the Future soundtrack on cassette, and picked out five of the best games you can get for $100 on the NES. Let's get right to it. Man, that sounds like shit. Now you may be thinking, James, aren't you a bit late to the game? Yeah, you'd be right. So much so that I put together a list back in October, and on December 8th, I went back to recheck my list and realized I had to remove two games from my list because of how much video games have gone up. With that being said, this list is based off PriceCharting.com's estimates as of December 8th, 2022. Let's get right to the first game, Ghost and Goblins. What's there to say that hasn't been said about this game? It's hard as hell. Not sure if I'll ever have the patience to beat this game 100%. I know not many people know this, but you actually have to beat the game twice in order to get the true ending. Personally, I haven't made it very far in this game, but then again, I haven't really devoted the time. It's fun, but frustrating as hell. It'll no doubt keep you coming back for more, so you'll definitely get your money's worth. Next up, we got Gunsmoke, or Gun.Smoke for some reason. You know, I'm not sure why I like this game so much. The controls are a bit weird since you have to press both A and B simultaneously to shoot straight, but you can get by with only shooting left or right, which is what I find myself doing most of the time. I love how the town folk claim to be on your side, and then charge you outrageous amounts of money for items to help on your journey. I mean, I get it, everyone needs money, but damn, cut me some slack. You can at least give the man who's trying to save your town a discount. Hell, you even have to buy the wanted poster in order to fight the boss, otherwise the stage loops. I'm fairly certain that's not how that works. This is another game I haven't devoted much time to, so I'm not sure how difficult the game gets in later stages, but it doesn't start off too difficult, which makes it easy to pick up and play. Next up, Punch Out. Yeah, if you're familiar with my channel, you probably didn't see that coming. I decided to go with this version just because it's cheaper. It's the exact same game as Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, it just doesn't have Mike Tyson. But Tyson isn't what makes this game great. As some of you may know, I love this game so much that I learned to speedrun it. I haven't actually ran the game in a while, but I'll eventually get back to it. Even though the boxer's patterns do become predictable the more you become familiar with the game, I absolutely love it and never grow tired of it. Moving on, how could I not pick Super Mario Bros. 3? You know, I only recently learned that there was two different label variations. I guess you're never too old to learn something new. If you haven't heard of this game, you play as a character named Mario on a journey to save Princess Toadstool, or Princess Peach, who has been kidnapped by a turtle dragon or some shit named Bowser or King Koopa if you like. You know, I feel like I'm starting to sound a bit condescending. Oh, that's a fancy word for having or showing a feeling of patronizing superiority. I did it again, didn't I? Well, maybe it's because there's not much to say about this game that hasn't already been said. It's obviously a game not many people talk about. Dare I say I'd call it a hidden gem. You know what, let's just move on. Last up, Mega Man 3.
So I kind of struggled between this or Mega Man 2. I know a lot of people prefer Mega Man 2, which I understand. It's no doubt the easier of the original six. This was actually the first Mega Man game I ever played. It also turned me off to Mega Man altogether for a long time. I really didn't like super difficult games as a kid. But anyway, according to price charting, it's the cheapest game in the original Hexology. And yes, I had to look that word up. Anyway, I remember having the most fun with this one while playing through the original six. However, playing these games back to back, they all started to blend together, so who knows. Well, anyway, guys, that was my list of games for the $100 NES challenge. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks again for watching. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you again 